Oh, I love your pants. You're so sexy in those. Oh, okay, that's my stereotype for New Jersey. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> but it's still fun to make fun of. Or is it true? <laughs> this is a 20-minute deep dive, so get ready. And yes, I will be covering some of the highlights of what Jan De Dolce said about Melissa recently because she was dragging her. But there's a lot more to this video, so you should definitely finish it. It's not about just Jan. I'm going to show you receipts from Reddit, Teresa's podcast, and some other uh, sources. So buckle up, buttercup. By the end of this, you're gonna have a feeling about Melissa and the truth. And it'll be your own opinion because some of you love Melissa and some of you don't, and some of you pull from you know off the show and some of you only focus on the show and some people listen to her podcast. She's got a huge fan base. so. I'm like just open-minded on this one and we're going to just see where this journey takes us and can we figure out the truth about Melissa? Because that actually is what interests me. What is the truth? All right, so always on The Real Housewives of New Jersey, Melissa has been, you know, very popular. People see her as the nicer one in the relationship with Teresa. But... Recently, her best friend went on The Real Andy of Beverly Hills, and she had had a falling out over the show. So here is a picture of Jan Marie Del Doce, and she has been friends with Melissa for many years. Like, she first knew Joe, and then she met Melissa through Joe. So that gives you an idea of how long she's known Melissa. She said in this interview that uh, she knows that Melissa was not a stripper. She says she knows that because uh, Joe wouldn't be with a stripper. So, so she she's going off what she thinks Joe would accept or not accept. Now we know Joe, there's a story that he went into this club that she worked at and like said, this is the last day you'll ever be here because he's very possessive over Melissa. And he, I guess, liked her right away, was like really into her from the minute he met her on vacation um, with another guy. But anyway, so <laughs> he was immediately into her. But that said, then this came out. So you may recall that Kim D at a fashion show and this guy named Angelo showed up. And it was rumored that it was Teresa who set it up. And then it was rumored it was production who set it up. And no one really supposedly knows the truth. I would say it was production from my experience. But needless to say, that happened. And I guess Angelo was Melissa Gorga's old boss at Lookers. And that was where she was a cocktail waitress. And he said that she did strip. Um, maybe, you know, I don't know if he went into great detail because a lot of those articles are gone now, but like he, he said that she stripped, like maybe it was one time, maybe it was five times, maybe it was more than that. I don't know, but that's what now, he said. Now, before I play you what Jan says I, uh, about Melissa, I'm going to play you a little of it. I want to remind you that Melissa and Jan's falling out that happened on The Real Housewives of New Jersey that nuked their really long friendship was season five. And during that season, there were rumors that Melissa was cheating on Joe. Okay, like we're about to see again in season 13, which is probably why this has raised its ugly head again. Now, not only were these cheating rumors in season five happening on Real Housewives in New Jersey. Simultaneously with this season five cheating gossip, this guy, Brian Bulldogs, who is Melissa's ex-boyfriend, rumored she was still seeing him when she hooked up with Joe, and she was seeing both of them allegedly at the same time for a little bit. This guy starts leaking all of this gossip that's alluding that he has some big bomb about Melissa that would like destroy Joe and the world if it ever came out. And there was a Reddit about this bomb that this guy had. Yeah, 
And let's just say it had to do with one of Melissa's kids, but that's in the Patreon. But let me play you what Jan says. Let me play you. This is from Real Andy of Beverly Hills interview. I'll put it in the credits so you can give him support too. Okay, so listen to this. And it, it wasn't. So they sat us at a table, like everybody was getting mic'd except my partner. And he just kind of, he kind of pushed me out there and I regret doing it. Cause I, I just, I was put on the spot at the time, but nothing that came out of my mouth was about Melissa. We were having conversations Bravo edited it, spliced it. There was a woman sitting next to me that was speaking. They completely mm -hmm. cut her out. They put all subtitles under my name and they kept shutting the camera off, asking me to say she cheated on Joe. And I kept saying no, because I had no knowledge of her cheating on Joe. And then when it aired, they showed, they showed it the way they edit it, the way they splice it, drips and drabs of different things coming out. That was a mix of mm -hmm. conversation and of the, what the woman next to me was saying. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's like in I, was, I, was, I was livid. Yeah, I never called her a stripper because she wasn't. I knew for a fact she wasn't. Joe would have never married her if she was. Mm -hmm. I never said she cheated on her husband because I had no knowledge or facts of that. Mm -hmm. uh, what else was said that I said she did? I don't know. But uh, Teresa pays me to speak for her. Teresa and I have never had a conversation like alone except at Melissa's gatherings. So I have. I, she actually had an appointment at a med spa that I work for in Nutley, New Jersey, um, called Spatology, and she wanted to come, whatever she was coming for, but I had to inform her that it was me on the phone and that it was where she was coming. She had made the appointment and then canceled, like, you know, a week prior to her appointment because I guess she didn't want to be in an uncomfortable position or avoid being around me. Yeah. Because we kept getting blamed for having this relationship with each other. I never wanted to be on the show. Teresa never asked me to come and get involved between her and Melissa and say- I've been to a few strip clubs in my time. I always end up talking to the girls about their problems at strip clubs. It's like when I was young, I must have had so many pep talks with strippers when I was at the clubs um, because they were all like trying to get to a certain place or they were doing it so they could achieve something else or they had a kid at home or they had been abused and you know, I'm not saying this is all strippers, but this was my experience. So anyway, needless to say, the owner of the club and Jan disagree about Melissa being a stripper. So we just will never know, I guess. So she goes on to share something else, and that is that Teresa is always blamed by Melissa for doing bad things to Melissa. But she feels, after being Melissa's friend, that Melissa intentionally uses Teresa as a scapegoat every time something bad comes out on the show or in the press about her. She just says like, oh, you know, it's Teresa's camp that put it out there or she'll agree with someone who says, oh, Teresa must have had someone leak that or whatever, okay? So she's like trying to set the record straight that she barely knows Teresa. She certainly wasn't set up by Teresa to spill this cheating tea, which by the way, she said she didn't spill. It was just edited in a bad way for her. Okay, so what does that tell you? It's production, right? Production is getting involved, setting up situations to create uncomfortable drama that wouldn't happen in real life. So for the people who think it's always Teresa, I have to say, I don't think it's Teresa because the producers tell us to come late they tell us to show up at places we wouldn't be going to. They invite us when we're not invited. Like it, it's all manipulated, you guys. Anyway, that aside, there were some things that really stuck out to me. She said that Melissa had no friends before she started shooting The Real Housewives of New Jersey. She didn't say it in a vindictive way. She just was like giving an observation that she felt, which was really bizarre to me because you know, why does she have no friends? Does she have trouble connecting with people? Is there something else going on with Melissa? Now I, by the way, I'm not a Teresa fan. I'm not a Melissa fan. I really don't care. I just like to spill the tea. And then I sort of shift in different directions, you know, so that we can talk about it, right? I, I honestly don't care about either of the women, to be honest. So I'm just saying, <laughs> like, this is not like a passionate topic for me. So feel free to comment as you see fit below. Um, one of my favorite parts of the interview was Jan Marie de Dolce saying that Melissa had asked her to write a letter 
saying that she was the younger, prettier sister. And so why isn't she in the show over Teresa? Wow. And she, I guess, asked a few friends to write this type of letter to Bravo's casting. So <laughs> she said she didn't send the letter, though. But she did confirm Melissa truly did ask her to write that letter. Hmm. When they were young and Melissa was trying to get on the show, besides the letter, she would ask uh, Jan to go to these different uh, girl events, you know, that the show would have. And Melissa would follow around the cameras trying to get covered so that she could try to get on the show. Okay, she was trying to show the, that she had what it took. So she was following the cameras. Ooh, I don't know. Something about that made me want to get a glass of water. <laughs> she also said something really interesting, which was Teresa and Melissa were friendly before Melissa went on the show. And Teresa would really try to reach out to her as a sister and they were getting along. So but allegedly, we Teresa fell out with Melissa at the bachelorette party for Melissa. That's where it went down. I wonder what made them fall out at a bachelorette party. That's questionable. Hmm. Now, you know what's weird is Melissa is very likable. I listen to her podcast. She seems really relatable, like a fun girl. But I don't know. It's like it is weird to have the only girl in your wedding party say, you know, what this woman is saying about her. And she really does not come off like she's trying to get on Housewives, honestly. I mean that. I really don't think so. If she wanted to cast, she, she doesn't do it this way. And she knows that because she's been around Melissa. So, hmm. Wonder what Melissa's really like. What do you guys think? Jan also said that she is coming out with this interview with the real Andy of Beverly Hills because Melissa Gorga went on her podcast and bashed her. Yeah, I woke up one morning to about seven to 10 DMs of the podcast <laughs> Melissa had done. Is this yeah. true? Is this true? And a lot of my friends, holy shit, she just spilled over a decade later, she's bringing it up. So, and then there was one person that just stuck. I really, she was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's read what Jan wrote in her text messages um, about this. As some of you may or may not remember, I appeared on Real Housewives of New Jersey as Melissa's friend. Unfortunately, the truth was totally hidden from everyone while Teresa was After blamed. After the season aired, I could have sold Melissa out, yet I chose not to. Many media outlets offered me money for information. Still, I remained silent and protected her. This is back in 2013. By the way, you guys, I doubt anyone offered her money, just saying. <laughs> if my goal really was to get on the show as a housewife, as she claimed in her recent podcast, I could have exposed her and her dirty ploy to have me write letters to Bravo so that they would cast her behind Teresa's back, which of course I didn't do. I could have attended several events that aired that she invited me to, but I declined because of the drama. We were truly like sisters. I was privy to many events and circumstances with which I could have revealed who she really is and let her true colors show, but I never did. I stayed silent. Okay, here we go. Melissa claims I met with Teresa in an attempt to get on the show. That's a lie. Why is she still lying after seeing the season 13 trailer? It seems like in true Melissa fashion, she's going to lie and try to throw Teresa under the bus as she always has. This is just history repeating itself once again. I can't say I'm surprised. And thanks to love, love, love Gabriella that posted it. Okay, so this is a Reddit that was posted like two years ago. It's pretty famous, this Reddit. Um, it's allegedly from a field producer for Jersey Shore, season one and two, who also worked on The Real Housewives of New Jersey. Of course, it's a non, so you never know. Although some things he said have turned out to be true. I'm not going to share the whole Reddit thread with you guys. I actually did a deep dive on it. It's in the Patreon uh, if you want to check it out. And you can decide how you feel about it. Uh, but needless to say, for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to focus on this part of what <laughs> was written. 
So he said, laugh out loud, production and Andy Cohen mercilessly protect Melissa and Joe Gorga. I know why, but I don't think it's worth it. The skeletons in their closet would make amazing television, but producers won't ever give them a bad edit. And when they do something bad, you'll notice the edit is flipped and diverted, and both Joe and Melissa get an insane amount of talking heads to push their narrative. When it comes to the Teresa versus Melissa battles, Melissa was actually the villain, but Teresa isn't warm and fuzzy with people in general, much less production, so she keeps getting screwed over. I do believe this gossip. Uh, what I did notice was that he did say that Teresa was difficult to get to know and talk to, and that is accurate. When I met Teresa at the OK Magazine party, I mean, given she might have been going through things with her case, but she was difficult to talk to, and she surprisingly, and difficult to, to kind of connect with. Funny enough, Teresa said something similar on her Namaste Bitches podcast with Melissa Feaster. I always called her Feister, and I love her. <laughs> Feaster. Um, <laughs> me and names. Oh, gosh. My memory is just terrible. I think it's, what can I say? Ooh, I better not say that word. I'm going to cut that out. Betrayed me. It was an ultimate betrayal. If this wasn't so like hurtful to me, so like painful in my heart, I would have not been saying this this whole time. That's why to Melissa and my brother, it's, it's no big deal because it wasn't done to them. It was done to me. It right. was done to me. It was done to me. And, and yes, I kept forgiving and forgiving. And, and now looking back that my brother would only come around when I was filming. And now I get it. And it's like, I was just used and abused just, you know, so they become famous so they could get their paycheck from housewives. And, uh, now, and like, I'm seeing it all. It's like, everything is like, I'm seeing it and I'm seeing, I'm seeing it clear as day. So like, that's why it's, it's just very hurtful to me. When I hear that I'm trying to make up things now, you know, that I'm, I'm bringing up and that I'm watching the show now show before because it was so hurtful to me. Yeah, you couldn't have. I, I didn't. And, and, and not even that, I was busy raising my children. Right. I would, that to me, number one thing was my daughters. You know, you see my daughters on Instagram, or whatever, but whoever knows my daughters knows that. That's what I was doing. Well, now and that Teresa, you know, I even remember you saying way back when, I mean, seasons, like so many years ago that, you know, obviously you, when your brother and Melissa came on the show, I mean, it was fighting from the get go. And I remember you so many seasons ago, like five, six, like back way then you saying had Melissa and Joe come on the show first, I would have never done this. So now seven, eight years later, you saying this, it's the same thing that you said that long ago. So you're not making this up. You would never go on another no, family member no. to you a lot. So let me make this clear. This is, I'm going to make this clear one last time. And after this, that's it. I'm not talking about this anymore because this is what, you know, this, the only, she wants to, the only way she's relevant is if she talks about me and I fucking finally, I see the tea. What, what, what do you say? You, uh, I woke up to the, the tea. light. Uh, no, like I'm not drinking the, you know, the, my You're not drinking the Kool-Aid. No Kool-Aid anymore. Exactly. So Teresa is saying a lot of duplicate information that Jan, Melissa's best ex-friend, has said. Listen. And Melissa, this is what you have to understand. Like, yeah, when Joe got deported, this, it was me by myself, me with my four daughters. And four. here I thought, you know, my brother was coming around to help me. Meanwhile, it was just around because of the show. Cause the only one the show yeah. was filming. It's so crazy to me because never once, never once did they ask me to go out. My brother or Melissa asked me to go out with them, like on a, on a Saturday night and like, when, when we weren't filming, not yeah. once, not once did they say, let's go out to dinner. We want to take her out to dinner. Not once, not once. And I even said to him one, one time, time, I'm like, why don't you ever ask me to go out? And he's like, well, because we always go out with couples. And I'm like, so what? I don't care if you go out with couples. I can, why can't I still come? 
You know, I'm like, you never ask your sister to go out. Just as I was about to wrap up this video, it's like kismic. JR Bravo Addict, who sends me gossip from time to time, has very fun stuff that she posts on her Instagram. You should go check her stuff out. Anyway, she sent me this little nugget. Ready? It's yes, I'm posting something that you guys have probably seen already, part of it, but the rest of it, you have it. Uh, she wrote, I just watched her YouTube video. God, who isn't a con artist in New Jersey? I just talked to Melissa Gorga's ex-business partner, partner, and that's, of course, Jackie Beard Robinson. And then she sent a, a, a post that's going around that Jackie posted, who's um, Melissa's ex-business partner in Envy. And there's Melissa and her together. And the post that Jackie uh, did said, we paid, we paid for everything. I didn't steal my own clothing. When I moved it all out, and if she had one red cent of her money in the store, she would have called the police. They were one block away from the Montclair store. Come on. She used the store credit card for everything. Shoes, babysitting, etc. And best part, she refused to agree to post at minimum two times per week. Now, if that were her store and she was making money, she'd be posting every week 10 times per week. She's a bit lazy. However especially if it's not all about her. Wow. And then my friend said, she said the Gorgas don't own anything and they scam the investors that go into business then with she them. she said that Melissa doesn't own Envy, that there has to be another owner because they could barely pay her 20% to have a partnership with Envy. Oh, interesting tea. Anyway, this is the cherry on the top of this video because this was just meant to be. <laughs> it came in right as I was doing it. I'm like, okay. And she did uh, say that I could tag her in it. Otherwise, I would have keep it, kept it anon, of course. Got to get this lady on the pod, Jackie. So after all this, who do you think's the bad guy? I'll tell you who I think is. Ready? I think it's the Real Housewives of New Jersey TV show. Why? Because it's what gave Melissa the big head that she has now that damaged all of her friendships. It hurt her relationship between with her and Teresa. It's hurt her relationship with Joe Gorga over the years. It's destroyed Teresa's relationship with Joe Gorga. It's destroyed her initial husband. It's one of the reasons Teresa says that she went to jail. So really, I guess the thing is like, be careful what you wish for, right? Fame, fortune, Real Housewives of New Jersey franchise. Maybe you get more than you bargained for.